I just got back from flying with the ND filter and I want to start this video off by sharing that experience because wow, I've never had the ability of seeing the ND filter effect in the goggle view. I've been flying the ND filter on my 5 inch and the GoPro for many, many years, but with the O3 system and the one camera, whatever change you make to this camera will be reflected of course in the onboard recording, but also in your goggle view. So being able to see what happens with the ND filter, that smooth kind of buttery experience in the goggle, that was something else. Hey folks, Mangrel here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited to be checking out this ND filter pack. Now I know it says for the Avada, but this actually works on the DJI O3 Air unit as well. So big thanks to Freewell for sending this to me for review, and I'm super excited to check this out. So finally, I'm able to actually get that cinematic smooth kind of video on a three inch quad. So I've been using ND filters for quite a while on my five inch quad with the GoPro, but this is the first time I'm able to do something like that on my three inch. And we'll check out how this actually works and some of the details behind that. But the first thing I wanna mention is, Really what an ND filter does is it limits the amount of light that comes into the camera, which allows us to really target a very specific aperture speed and kind of camera settings. And that allows us to have a very smooth kind of flowy video. Now there are a lot of videos out there on explaining this kind of concept. There's one that was recently published by JB who did an amazing job. I'll link you to his video rather than going through and trying to explain it myself but I'll walk you through what you need to know to actually make this work in your O3 system. The one thing I'm a little bit disappointed off the bat is this pack here doesn't include an ND4. So really my experience with the GoPro has been ND4, 8, 16 are really the go-tos, at least for our Canadian kind of weather. I've never used an ND64. We just don't have that much light here. Perhaps if you're flying over maybe snow or over water, ND64 can work with that. So I would have loved to have a ND4, 8, 16, 32 for a standard day pack, but you know what? They make an ND4 anyway. So if you find that that's something that you need for your kind of flying, you can always pick that up anyway. All right, so let me go ahead and open this up. We'll see what exactly we get. I can already tell you that the packaging is really well put together. So we're already getting a really good experience from that perspective. And I want to see, do they give you a little carrying case and those kind of things? Because I never had that with the GoPro camera butter ones. Let's see, let's get this out here. Ooh, very nice. So we have a little tiny pouch here. What's inside this? Okay, so amazing unboxing experience so far. So we have some stickers. Good job. So maybe I'm going to add my Freewell sticker to my Quadmilla sticker here. We've got, oh, this is awesome. So kind of learn the basics. So all the stuff I mentioned that JB's video walked us through, you can scan this and get those same basics. I'll hold this here for just a couple of seconds in case you want to do that yourself. But video tutorials, yeah, good job. Uh, Freewell, good job with including this because I think it'll be helpful. I'll take a look and see what exactly it covers and the level of detail. And this to me just looks like a little cleaning pad, which is good. We do want to keep our filters nice and clean. So let's take a look at this. It seems quite small, but maybe it's good for our purposes. That's nice. Little tiny cleaning pad. Awesome. Okay. What else do we have? Okay. So it does come with a case. Now it's, a hard plastic case, which I think may end up breaking once we get it into our quad bags and we knock it around. But over here, this seems like a nice soft rubber. Yeah, so this is good. Only thing I'm not feeling too strongly about is the hard cover. Okay, let me get one of the filters out. Are they nicely labeled? Yeah, so on the side here, you can see what they are. ND 3264 eight and 16. So I suspect I need the 16 for today's weather, but let me get one of these out. Okay. So it comes out pretty easily. And if I look at this, that's good. So it's got some gasket kind of material there to prevent dust and debris from entering in between the two lenses. And the quality seems quite nice. 
I'm going to use this frame to do the testing of the free while ND filter. And that's because this is the frame that has my O3 system. And it's also designed for the O3 system. So you can see how much space we have at the front because that camera ND filter is pretty close to the standoff. So you want to make sure you've got a frame that has plenty of space at the front and I'll do measurement in a second. And this frame is designed for the O3. So it does make it a little bit easier. And if you're wondering, this is a three inch freestyle quad. It's a quad Mulla Siren F3 split. In terms of measurements, this frame here at the very front between the standoffs, it's got 22.4 millimeters or 22.45 millimeters of space. And if you look at the ND filter, you can see it does stick a little bit past the edge of the camera. So if I check the measurements, so I'll check the width here. So we're looking at you know, roughly, let's say 21.8, 22 millimeters in terms of the width. The height's not an issue because it is constrained by the camera here, but definitely wanna make sure you've got enough width in your frame to accommodate the ND filter. Let's go ahead and do a quick weight check because I'm using this on a sub 250 gram quad. I wanna see how much weight this adds. Okay, barely anything. So we're only adding in 0.56 grams. Now the way the ND filter installs is it actually clips in between these two pieces that stick out from the camera. The installation is quite easy. Now the removal can be a bit tricky and this is not Freewell's, I guess, uh, challenge because this is how DJI intended this to work. Now to remove this, depending on how you do it, you may have a very easy experience or you may hate yourself. Now, what I found is the easiest is just to kind of get your fingernail underneath here and try to pop it up. And you can see sometimes it can be pretty hard to get off, but there we go, we got it off. And at times to get it off, you end up actually moving the camera, which is not ideal because your angle changes. But let me show you how it reinstalls. And you wanna make sure you don't touch the inside of the ND filter, but we can just kind of slot it in here like that, get the bottom in and then just push the, the top in and it clips in. And of course, we can use our cloth to clean it up. So not, not too bad, but definitely you wanna get in with your fingernail here, try to hold the camera as steady as possible and then pop it up. Again, I can't fault Freewell for this. They have to work within the design of DJI, but the installation and removal of the GoPro ND filter, oh, way easier. Now in the goggles, you wanna pull up your camera settings. So we'll pull up the menu. And within the camera settings, the important thing is that we set this into manual mode. So over here, we go manual. The ISO can remain the auto, so the goggles themselves will ramp up and down for the ISO based on how much light is available. So right now, I'm in a dark room, so you can see I'm using 6400, which is a max. The important thing, though, is you want to have your shutter speed set to one over two times your frame rate. So we can see down here, my frame rate is 4K 60. So two times 60 is 120. So I have used one over 120. And the white balance, I have this locked. So you can choose a number that you're comfortable with, but I don't want the color to become more yellow, more white, and keep changing on me during flight. I want a nice standard white balance. So I have this set to 4,000, and then I can correct it in post-production. And lastly, I'm using normal FOV and I've got the EIS off using the semi light color.
That first flight was without an ND filter, and the thing that really stood out for me was the motion capture in the props. So those red spinny things in the corner were actually the props, and it helps you really visualize what's happening with the motion blur. So when we were facing away from the sun, so let's say we're going this way, sun's behind us, you can see that there was more motion blur in the props, but when we turned around and we were heading back towards the sun, you almost saw this uh, stop motion effect happening in the props. Now the same thing's happening in the entire kind of footage it's capturing, but it really stood out in the props. And you can see it, you know, in, in the ground, you can see it in the grass, but definitely the props helps you visualize and highlight better. That last video really showcased and highlighted the benefit of having an ND filter. The footage was just so buttery, so smooth, so cinematic. And the fact that the O3 system lets you see that effect in the goggle view itself, it's just wonderful. And I, I recognize that some of you may think that the ND filter adds additional complexity. So yes, you do have to be mindful of the camera settings. You do have to choose the right ND filter. Me personally, I've been doing that all along with my five inch quad anyway and the GoPro. So no additional effort really. And the fact that I can get such amazing flight footage now through the three inch here, for me honestly, it's super worth it. The other thing to bear in mind, and maybe this will help justify those of you who are thinking it's too much work, these cameras, the O3 cameras, do not have a replaceable lens. So the glass on there, if you break that, you do have to change the entire camera. That wasn't the case with the Vista. Back in the day with the Vista, you break a lens, you, you shatter that lens, you can go ahead and replace it. No longer the case on the O3. So having these ND filters not only gives you better flight footage, but also gives you a bit of protection of that expensive camera. So that also may help some of you justify getting the ND filter. Thanks again, Freewell, for sending this to me for review. You've done an amazing job on these filters. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.